What associations does the word Kalama evoke in you? If you ask this question to a random person in Russia, in response you will hear freeze, prison, detainee, road, Stalin, Gulag, and something like this. All these words are directly related to Magadan. During the Stalinist repressions, about 2 million people were sent to labor camps in Kalama. According to various estimates, half of them died. Nowadays, people are no longer sent to Kalama by force, and for the past 30 years in the Magadan region, there has been an outflow of the population. In the summer of 2021, I decided to find out what life looks like in the main gold mining state in Russia, but at the same time one of the fastest emptying regions of the country. My journey began in Novosibirsk airport. I managed to buy a relatively cheap ticket from there to Magadan because of the state subsidy for Yalth. So I paid 6,500 rubles instead of 18,000. My flight took 5.5 hours. The time difference with Novosibirsk was 4 hours in Magadan, and I was 8 hours ahead from Moscow. I didn't feel the change of time zones, the weather was warm and sunny, so I immediately began exploring the area. So here I am in Magadan, this is the interior of its airport Sokol. Looks quite Soviet, a lot of random advertisement, some Soviet mosaics on the walls. Unfortunately, here is no sign saying that we are in Magadan. It only says airport. Quite a lot of cars and obviously because Magadan is connected with the big land by the only road called Kolyma. And the task for now is to hitchhike to the city. This is the end of June and dandelions only appear here. Because in the European part of Russia it usually happens in the beginning of May and in some southern regions in the end of April. The summer is just beginning here. Look at these fresh leaves and this massive airplane of Aeroflot. Magadan airport is located 50 kilometers from the city in the village of Sokol. I was given a lift to the city by a local woman Ksenia. The road to the airport was the federal highway Kolyma. There was unexpectedly good asphalt covering. Ksenia told me that if I lived in Magadan, I would own a car without or with limited customs clearance because the city was included into a special economic zone. This zone stretches to the village of Palatka, 80 kilometers north of the city. There is a customs post behind Palatka, which is not allowed to cross by bonded vehicles. Therefore, Magadan with its surrounding area is a kind of a road oasis. Having discovered that this was my first visit to Kolyma, Ksenia organized a free car tour around the city for me. The first impression of Magadan turned out to be positive. There was a vibe, and by average Russian standards, its central part looked pretty decent. Magadan is a relatively small city. We drove around most of the iconic places in half an hour, and then I went walking around the area. Hello, tight. Look at that. This is a hot sea, and now it's getting to its lowest level. So this is the original level of the water in the bay, but now because of low tide, it's kind of lower, and we can walk the bottom of it. Расскажите, а как вообще тут что происходит, что вы собираетесь? Мы собираем вот это. Это ракушки? Ракушки. Как это вообще называется? Это называется меди. 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 А что вы с ними вот готовите их или просто да. собираете сами ракушки? Нет, здесь отварится и кушать не будет. А, нифига себе. 
Круто, круто. The city was founded in 1929 with the purpose of exploring the reserves of gold. Now Kalima or Magadan Oblast is considered to be the golden capital of Russia. Basically because gold industry is the main source of income of people here as well as the sea. And this is the most contemporary and the most popular public place in the city, the Park Lighthouse, uh, named in honor of this lighthouse. Crowds of people walking with children. What do you think about this park? Do you like it? How do you think about it on the 5-ball scale? 9. I understand that there was no place before here, there was no place before here, no place before here, no place before here, no place before here. How long did this come out? И тут, получается, планируют все это расширять еще дальше. Yesterday I set up a camp on the hill in front of the Magadan. The plan for today is to continue exploring Magadan. And so we've got to Magadan Pass and this is snow, the very end of June. 40 kilometers west of Magadan, the Kalama upland is replaced by the plain. There are several fishing villages on the coast of the Ahatsk Sea. The first permanent settlements in this area appeared in the middle of the 17th century, long before the construction of Magadan. The road that I've taken leads to the village of Tauisk, founded in 1634. We won't get there, but stop in front of a pair of empty three-story panel blocks of flats. This is a former fishing village Novostroika. In Soviet times, one of the best fish factory in Magadan region was located here. In the best years, about 200 people lived in Novostroika. There was a shop, a club, a kindergarten, a library, a pharmacy and other infrastructure facilities. Since 2003, Novostroika has been considered to be uninhabited. However, the main dominance in the village, two three-story buildings with 18 apartments each, have been well preserved. You can even enjoy a weather-beating Soviet mosaic on the wall of one of them. White Moskvich next to it seems to be parked forever. By the way, despite the apparent neglect, Novostroika is actually inhabited. I met three persons involved in the construction of a private house for temporary living there in summer, so we just drank tea during their break, and then I walked the road to wait for the car that would give me a lift to Magadan. Anti-mosquito net and glowless are two great things that rescue me in this journey. Luckily now I can freely open my eyes, I can freely speak and these pieces of shit that fly around me, they don't really touch me. I need to reach Magadan and charge all of my devices. Cameras, power bank, telephone. It's necessary because I'm about to spend a week in the wilderness almost in the wilderness and I'm not sure if there will be opportunities to do it somewhere on the road. Good morning, we are again in Magadan. I spent this night on the roof of a supermarket. Today I finally live in Magadan. I'm going to start my hitchhiking session to Yakutsk. But first things first, I'll need to charge all of my electronic devices buy some food, some water, and only after that I will go further. All right, we've come to the most boring part of any journey is cooking the food uh, because it's so time consuming. It can take 40, 50, 60 minutes to cook your breakfast or dinner or lunch. Usually in my life I just go to a grocery store or to a fast food restaurant, but here prices are incredibly high even in supermarkets and therefore today we're eating kind of sandwiches with um, expired bread, a ham and this sort of kisel, I don't know how to translate it into English, it's kind of sweet drink 
with little pieces of uh, berries and fruits so hopefully it will give me some energy for the morning it's pretty tasty sweet reminds me of the kisel that i drank in kindergarten not that thick so pretty decent drink for the morning This is quite a typical transport for the area of Magadan, such massive jeeps, they're almost bigfoots, they're used to go fishing and to go hunting to cross swamps and terrible off-roads of this area, and they can be rarely seen in the European part of Russia. I got to the shopping mall in the city center of Magadan to charge my electronics. The time is half 11 and look at that, it's completely deserted, none of the shops is working that's so weird everything is closed this is the embankment of Magadanka river perhaps it was named in honor of the city of Magadan here are some trash some random concrete blocks but it could have been a pretty decent spot for chilling for walking well perhaps local authorities one day improve it as they did with this playground for children Сейчас я вам покажу цены на такие какие-нибудь базовые вещи. Ну вот первый стеллаж у нас с шоколадом. Вот, например, Аленка стоит 96 рублей. Килограмм фисташек нам обойдется в 962 рубля. Килограмм макаронов за 63 рубля. А вот, кстати, я нашел сахар 55 рублей за килограмм. Гречневая крупа 800 граммов за 105 рис. Полтора килограмма 160 Буханка дарницкого хлеба за 56 рублей. А вот ягоды, я смотрю, здесь продают замороженными. Килограмм клубники замороженной и засахаренной стоит 243 рубля. Брусника 496 рублей за килограмм. Килограмм малины 758 рублей. Говоря о местных реалиях, стоит ответить салат из морской капусты. Чуть меньше литра молока, 950 граммов. Простоквашины полтора процентного обойдутся нам в 102 рубля. 300 граммов сметаны 213 рублей. Йогурты Даниссимо 102 рубля. Сосиски вот 286 рублей вот за такую пачку. Самая дешевая полторашка воды, как ни странно, это Бонаква за 49 рублей. Поскольку мы находимся на востоке, здесь можно встретить очень много корейских, всяких азиатских товаров. Бич-пакеты, лапша по 125, по 75, по 100 рублей, самые разные. Различные соусы и все в основном корейское. Ну и напоследок посмотрим на овощи, фрукты. Вот, например, бананы килограмм. Тут, тут у нас качан капусты. Килограмм стоит 404. Тут вообще интересная ситуация, то что капусту продают за 71 рубль, вот такой качан. В то же время, только что минуту назад видели их по 600 рублей. Яблочки по 270, красные помидоры 712, 853 рубля, огурцы 564, морковь 658. А вот китайская морковь сильно дешевле, кстати, чем Отечественная всего по 97 рублей за килограмм. Before leaving Magadan, I visited the memorial to the victims of political repression, also known as the Mask of Sorrow. The monument is located in the place where the distribution camp for prisoners was located in Stalin's times. After visiting the monument, I went to the road and hitchhiked to Palatka. Palatka is one of the most peculiar settlements in Kolyma. On a bus stop in Palatka, I accidentally met my new travel buddy Vova. He said he had been walking from Magadan for several days and his actual plan was to walk through Russia and all of the Slavic countries. For fun, I suggested my new friend to explore Palatka together and hitchhike to Yakutsk with me. To my surprise, Vova agreed and we carried out traveling together. But let's return to Palatka. The settlement is under the patronage of the local oligarch Alexander Basansky, 
whose fantasies are reflected in the modern look of the settlement. This is absolutely surrealistic. Hard to believe that in such as of the world, such kind of well-developed infrastructure, the level of, let's say, provincial Russian city, but probably not a village, another fountain with another ancient sculpture. There are also some sculptures of wild animals. These are bears and they probably occasionally walk around this village. Look at this massive castle. Honestly, I'm amazed. Памятник, видимо, неизвестному солдату эпохи Древней Греции. Палатка differs from other villages in the area in terms of positive vibe. The houses there are renovated and painted in vivid colors. The roads are paved. Some other infrastructure facilities also exist. By the way, Palatka is the most gushing settlement in Russia because there are five fountains of various shapes and sizes for only 4,000 residents. We have not succeeded in hitchhiking in north direction and decided to overnight in this abandoned barrack. There are two rooms, sort of the kitchen, entrance hall there is no window but in this room is pretty warm and here is the question with sailings for some reasons it's so low perhaps it was made to kind of save the warm in the house because it could be quite cold during winter minus 30 minus 40 degrees celsius so people lived here until 2008 here is the calendar on the wall this is the sofa I'm going to sleep, and now we are cooking coffee. It's morning of the next day. I'm cooking buckwheat porridge today that was pretty good spot for sleeping you're supposed to have a breakfast and after that continue hitchhiking so hitchhiking in the morning appeared to be way better than in the evening and now we found ourselves in the abandoned village of Karamke. its population officially is zero people but some of them still live or at least work here. It used to be a relatively big settlement back to 20th century and it appeared here in 20th century as well. But now it's all about the ruins and abandoned constructions. Karamken is famous for the flood that happened here. A lot of buildings were demolished. Ruins on the left, ruins on the right. Здрасте. Да. Путешествуем с Магадана, едем на Якутск. Карамкен это здесь, да, это здесь была администрация при Сталине, когда в смысле из зоны были. И да, и вот здесь вот там вот бараки были, там вот в дом распадки стреляли, да. Ну, в смысле, врагов народа. И я хочу сказать, что по этой трассе и вообще по России, вы, наверное, не первый раз путешествуете. Встретится много гадости еще. Не медведей, а. Ну, ну, понятно, людей, гадость, которые попытаются тоже. обобрать, попытаются кто-то вас это самое, чего-то как-то, где-то, будьте очень осторожны. Когда... So we are continue exploring Karamkian and eventually found some abandoned residential buildings like this one built uh, during Stalin's era according to the architecture, according to its windows. This one is a little bit newer but probably was built also in USSR. We found quite interesting place, Dalnivastochny Hektar. This is kind of the national program uh, sponsored by the Russian government that allows any Russian citizen to get a land on Far East for free. So you send the application online and in case the government uh, confirms it, uh, then you will be given uh, a piece of land somewhere on Far East for free. And some people got the land here in this abandoned village. So I have climbed to the roof of this abandoned building, which is not really abandoned because at least a couple of people live here. You can see two or even three satellite dishes. Uh, one of them is a TV dish, another one is probably for mobile connection, and this is the surrounds of the area, totally deserted. An hour and a half later, 
we still haven't left this area of Karamkian. Some cars stopped, but they either went not that far from here or couldn't pick us up because they were fully loaded with their stuff. Just wait, wait for a miracle, wait for something. Hopefully soon we'll leave this place. On a service truck, me and Vovo were picked up by a driver ferrying that truck from Magadan to Dukat Silver Field. Kalama is mainly famous for gold mining, but in addition to gold, deposits of other metals and minerals are also being developed there, including coal, lead, antimony, tin, silver and copper. We drive at low speed, crossing countless rivers and creeks. Having stopped, we notice an unpleasant surprise. No, no, no. Some water is so bad. This is all over the place. This is all over the place. From Atkin, the news is from Bobrovo. And Solara was sent to Dodova. Atkin was, you can say, the heart of the federal road. From there, they took us from different villages to Solara and took us to Atkin. So, the autobus was their own. The outlines of a settlement with a monument in the form of a hammer and sickle smoothly appear on the horizon. We are approaching the village of Atke, which was resettled in 2020. Nowadays, there are a gas station and a roadside cafe. Formerly, a petroleum product storage and distribution center was also located in Atke. Life in Atke became difficult long before the actual resettlement of the village. Here is what the journalists of News.ru wrote about local life in 2001. Residents of the Atka village in the Magadan region have already been wintering without electricity and heating for five years. Every morning they go to the local boiler house to get some coal. A baby bath attached to a sled is the most convenient way of transferring fuel for hot belly stoves. People need to walk for coal at least three times a day to keep their houses warm. The temperature in the region is 42 degrees Celsius below zero. Somehow they have survived the fifth winter, warming themselves with their stoves. Most of the residents here hope that the authorities will resettle them somewhere to warm lands. However, only one person out of 600 people in the settlement have received a subsidy and moved from Atka. We have stopped at a random river with extremely cold but clear water. That's incredible. It is 80 kilometers left to the turn to Dukat and Omsukchan. Driving the road, we come across the ruins of numerous liquidated settlements. Mainly former Gulag prisoners and gold miners live there. The ice on the rivers flowing along the route, which doesn't melt even in 30 degrees heat, makes it clear how harsh the natural conditions are here. At the same time, Kalama and neighboring Yakutia are engulfed in forest fires. We even noticed a fire front close to the road. At the intersection of roads, we say goodbye to our driver. Together with him, we covered more than 200 kilometers. It's 1717 kilometers to Yakutsk and 300 uh, to Magadan. Um, this is kind of the checkpoint for uh, some drivers. They stop here, they can make a call because actually here is no mobile connection in the entire area, but uh, there are such exceptions as this is the emergency life support station where you can wait for the rescue service in case of emergency. They are usually located in the remotest places on the roads in Nagadan region with zero signs of civilization, 
being the only source of mobile connection for hundreds of kilometers around. Such containers are equipped with heating system, fire extinguishers, a first aid kit, warm clothes and food and water supplies. The containers are powered by solar panels and power cells. You can call the Federal Rescue Service by pushing the emergency button on the wall of the container. The available food supplies should be sufficient for the simultaneous stay of four people inside the station within 48 hours. I have eventually got to my next checkpoint, the abandoned settlement of Sporne. Sorry for shaking the camera, I'm trying to uh, get rid of mosquitoes, but it's literally impossible, they're everywhere. It used to be a village, like a settlement of several uh, thousand residents. Now it's either completely abandoned or we can still encounter a couple of people here that live unofficially. It's quite a common case for some abandoned Russian settlements that people still live there without any communication. I mean that without any uh, basic utilities like electricity and shit without mobile connection. Uh, by the way, here is zero mobile connection, so in case something happens with me, uh, nobody will probably uh, know about that. Um, so I rely on the luck at some point and hopefully I will be fine. Whoa! Что за шум? А, смотрите. Охренеть. Мы пришли к потенциальному месту ночевки. So I'm going to spend the night in this abandoned apartment, in this abandoned five-story residential building in the abandoned settlement of Sporne. 11.30 p.m. and you see it's quite bright at the moment because in this area there are white nights in summer and that means that it doesn't get dark for a while. There are the longest days in the entire year and the shortest nights. Morning world, it's 6 a.m. at the moment. I had a pretty decent six hours sleep. I woke up only once. Basically earplugs. Earplugs, this is the thing that rescued me because this night has been uh, a little bit windy and uh, some elements of this abandoned building were just shaking and beating each other. And that made some strange sounds like uh, somebody walking or somebody is opening the door of this entrance hall but i didn't hear it and therefore had pretty good sleep now i'm going to cook my breakfast eat and then explore this village a little bit without this massive backpack i decided this is not cool to begin every day with a buckwheat porridge therefore today I'm about to cook these spicy noodles from a grocery store in Magadan. The noodles is pretty typical, nothing special, but some additions. Yes, they are extremely sharp, extremely spicy.
This is panoramic view from another side of the house I stayed at. A lot of ruins. The ruins of farm, the ruins of wooden barracks, the remains of five stories residential buildings. So I see no sense to get inside that buildings because uh, the apartments are completely empty as this one. So literally bolt walls without the furniture or something. It would be enough just to walk around this settlement and then we will hitchhike to the next destination. Only fireplaces are remained after this building. Here probably were some kind of shops or perhaps uh, like a market. There are probably were supermarkets on the first floor of this building. The scenery here is almost the same as in Vorkuta and it surrounds its urban localities. The only difference is that it's located in thousands of kilometers from Borkuta, but the situation is the same. And the atmosphere here is a little bit depressive. What is more is that the weather is getting worse. Now it's quite cold because I'm in the jacket and this is not enough. I'm about to wear my sweater. But yesterday it was just hot. It was hot to be here in just a t-shirt. So there is the river. I don't know its name. And perhaps uh, this building is somehow associated with the gold company because you see the river is not like a straight flow of the water uh, it's dicked and there are a lot of hills of uh, the solid uh, and uh, they are caused by the golden machine that obtain gold here all right i can finally got to the highway and now i'm going to hitch a car towards yakutsk Welcome to Chernobyl, to be precise, to the urban locality of Sinigoria in Magadan region. This is the Orthodox cross with the saying God rescue and save Russia in such abandoned residential buildings on the background. The atmosphere here is extremely depressive. The history of the urban type settlement of Sinigori began in the 70s with the construction of the Kolama Hydro power plant, the main source of electricity in Magadan region. It was the world's first hydro power plant built on permafrost. Logically, Sinigoria is a settlement of power engineers who work at the plant. Here is literally nothing remained. All the apartments are completely empty. Only wallpapers are remained. Even the wires are cut. A lot of abandoned buildings, but there are some inhabited ones, like this one. The population outflow began here in the 90s. Less than 2,000 of the 11,000 residents who lived here in 1989 have remained. Today in Sinigoria there is a fire station, a hospital, a school, a sport complex, a boiler house and several shops. The Mother of God Church, which appeared here in the late 90s, should be noted among the cultural attractions. After exploring some abandoned houses and swimming in a local lake, I went towards the town of Susuman, where my new friend Vova was waiting for me. Police officers gave me a lift to the highway, and we also visited the closed airport of Sinigoria, which serviced regular flights to Magadan until 2000. So on the way back from Sinigoria, I got to the settlement of Debin. It's so tiny, I believe. Uh, less than a thousand of people live here. And now we are going straight to Susuman. <laughs> Спасибо большое. Давай. 
Все, давай, счастливо. Here we are again with our old friend. Yesterday we split it up. We met up again in the settlement of Susuman. Tomorrow we are going to carry on our journey. There is another town in Magadan region aside from Magadan, which is called Susuman. Its population is 4,300 people. The history of this town began with the founding of one of the Gulag forced labor camps in 1956. Today here is an office of the largest gold mining company in Russia. There are also some places of interest, like a monument to a track, numerous steel houses, a huge river with unpronounceable name Berloch, and a monument to the heroes of the Second World War. However, the main treasure there is people. He asked the stranger for water, but instead he bought us a package of food. Having had nutritious lunch, we went to the road to continue our journey. <coughs> Чем смог? Спасибо большое. Давай, давай, давай. 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 Не получится? Ладно, ладно, понятно. Давай. We haven't hitched the car from the turn there we were left and therefore we decided to walk to Kadekchan, it's about 10 kilometers from here. Backpack is heavy as always, I've got additional 4 liters of water. We have covered 1.5 kilometers from our starting point and decided to stop in front of the abandoned gas station, the highway Kaluma. Absolutely deserted in this area. I haven't seen a car in that direction for at least 10 minutes. Let me tell you that this is the only road that connects Magadan with the big land. <laughs> so we have successfully got to Kadekchan, or at least it seems to be it. We have just met a random person on a car. He told that uh, here is nobody in Kadekchan except these guys. This settlement is completely uninhabited, but here is some kind of wooden cabin for hunters and fishermen. There we can technically overnight. There is a fireplace and a source of water nearby. Fucking scared of bears, to be honest, because there are a lot of their shit. <laughs> we have just woken up, it's 11.20 a.m. in Kadakchan. Today I'm cooking buckwheat porridge and Bobo is boiling water for another porridge for his breakfast. This is our tent, we pitched it on the fifth floor of residential building. Pretty calm and chilly place when sun is shining, way more welcoming than during dusk. Let's a little bit explore the area where we stayed. There is a row of abandoned apartments. All of the apartments are completely empty. The only thing that is remaining here is wallpapers, probably. All of the batteries, all of the hidden things are cut. Here used to be the bathroom, the toilet. Here is a lot of random books and magazines. This one is for children. 
Kadekchan is a dead coal mining town in Magadan region. It was founded during the Second World War and built by Gulag prisoners. Coal was used mainly at a power plant in the neighboring settlement of Myaonje. In November 1996, an explosion occurred at a coal mine in Kadekchan and killed six people. After the explosion, the mine was closed and people began to leave the settlement. In 2001, the buildings there were cut off from heating and electricity. However, Kadekchan had become completely empty only by 2010. The most interesting object in Kadekchan turned out to be a school with miscellaneous Soviet artifacts, such as old film strips, textbooks, documents, pioneer records. It was possible to determine what lessons were held in certain classes by their interior design. You were especially impressed by the burned-out gym and foreign language rooms. This is how Soviet children learned English. Here is no political vocab. In general, Kadekchan has a lot of similarities with other neglected settlements in Magadan region. The same houses, nature, and absence of people. We didn't linger in Kadekchan and went straight to the highway after exploring the school. We have made it to the next settlement on Kolyma Highway called Ust-Hakchan. It's supposed to be the last settlement on the territory of Magadan Oblast that is inhabited uh, prior Yakutia. Ну как тебе река Нера? Как тебе река Нера? Давай ниже, ниже. Угу. Держу. Все, отпускай, отпускай, да. We are currently in this village of Ust Nera. This is approximately half of the way between Magadan and Yakutsk. And look at our potential sleeping spot. This is goddamn ruined four-story residential building with this kind of scratch. My assumption is that it was caused by permafrost because basically the ground here, the solid, is not that strong as usual and it caused the damage to foundation but as soon as we don't have a lot of options we will try to get there look at that it's literally ruined the midday in Ustnera look at this folk it is caused by forest fires that are around the settlement. It's quite dry, the air is so dry, so it's a little bit difficult to breathe. And therefore, despite the fact that we had enough sleep, we still feel a little bit tired.
it is two hours as we are at this spot in Ustnira. There are plenty of cars in the direction of Yakutsk, but most of them were going to local airport and therefore we shouldn't count it. The traffic has become way lower despite the fact that it's just 6 p.m. There were plenty of cars before 5.30, but now the road seems to be deserted. We had been attempting to leave Usnira for 8 hours. Some of the locals gradually began to recognize us, and a taxi driver even shared some food with us. <laughs> Soon the situation took an unexpected turn. Vova drew attention to the truck driver who stopped in the parking lot in front of our hitchhiking spot. The driver was repairing his truck and Vova decided to help him. 20 minutes later we were all drinking tea in that truck. The driver Sanya agreed to give us a lift to Yakutsk the following day after unloading the container that he had transferred from Yakutsk. Sanya also suggested us to overnight in his truck. He turned out to be a creative person, and before going to sleep, he shared one of his songs with us. For the whole following day, me and Vova were killing time doing nothing and waiting for Sanya. And eventually we set off. Since then, we had had to cover another thousand kilometers by Coloma Highway. <laughs> Our truck is too hot at the moment. We decided to stop for a while and to enjoy the views of the mountains of Yakutia. We've got to a meaningful point on Kalama Highway. It is called Kuba. 
this is a gas station in the middle of nowhere if you look around here is literally nothing except these two kind of temporary buildings that are used as hotel and basically these uh, gas reservoirs We have stopped at the border of the districts of Sahar Republic and this border is the border of time zones so here is plus seven hours from Moscow and here is plus six We have got to a massive glacier on the river Indigirka. This is the original permafrost. Look at that. Here it is, the original glacier. Ноги обжигает. We have stopped at one of the deadliest places on the entire Kolyma highway, which is called Chorny Prizim. Here is a downhill there, and then there is a sharp turn right. You go here and then a sharp turn left. Here is the remains of the truck that has gone to this kind of canyon of the river. We decided to stop completely at the coast of Vastochnaya Handika and cook the dinner basically. Now we are boiling the water. I'm going to cook some noodles. Here I also have almost one kilogram of buckwheat porridge and just some random sweets. Да, сады у нас там огромные, сад база, короче. Короче, там нашли два трупа охотника. 
на водонапорной башне, блядь, выстрелили все патроны, короче, из голода померли, а вокруг следов, короче, этих волчьих куило кукуило. What's going on world? We have eventually got to the village of Handega, the village between Magadan and Yakut. This is a pure island of civilization. Look at this shop, this one and this. We are in the heart of the world. It took us about 38 hours to cover about 550 kilometers. We have got to the ferry across Aldan river. This is the only river that we have to cross by ferry. This is the actual ferry. We are going via the consequences of the forest fire. The ground is black. All of the trees are dead. stuck in the dirt because the road became dejected after rain. However, our driver Sane had useful experience in driving winter roads that helped us to break out of this trap. This is the station of Nizhny Bistiach and this is the sign saying that it is 1963 kilometers to Magadan, 33 kilometers to Yakutsk. I still haven't been to Yakutsk, I'm going to visit it tomorrow because it's located on the opposite shore of uh, Lena river. This is uh, the end of the railway line that I will take in uh, several days after exploring Yakutsk and its surrounds and it took me literally eight days to get here from Magadan so new journey is coming up stay tuned see you later